Got your Bibles, please turn to Jeremiah chapter 7. And so now we're coming right to the end of chapter 7. And this is where I want to introduce something to you. It's the concept of Gehenna. And I am going to introduce this concept to you and talk a little bit about what most English Bibles in the New Testament translate the, the Greek word Gehenna as hell. So Gehenna, hell on earth. And I want to show you the origin, the visual origin of this picture. Okay, so before we do, I want to ask you this question as we are going to look at this section, Jeremiah 7, verses 30 to 34. Here's the question. Would you still want to be a Christian if you found out there was no hell? Ponder that. Because I think some people think Christianity is simply an insurance policy against going to hell. And if that's you, welcome into the kingdom. But you may discover that on your ticket, it's not a deck voyage. You've actually got a cabin. Come on in. Experience what your salvation is really all about. It's not just about being pulled out of the water. It's about enjoying the journey. And if you think Christianity is simply so you don't go to hell, that might get you there. That might get you into the kingdom. But I tell you now, that is not the message of Jesus. And it's not the message of the New Testament. Consider this. In all of the record of the New Testament, through the book of Acts, the writings of the Apostle Paul, the Apostle Paul never used the word hell once. Never. Isn't that interesting? In all the record of gospel preaching, he never spoke about hell. So, I hope I've got you intrigued. If you found out there was no hell, would you still be a Christian? Or is the only reason you're a Christian because you think, Phew, at least I'm not going to hell? Well, here's another question for you. Would you still want to be a Christian if you found out there was no heaven? Now, I guess I need to qualify this question. Would you still be a Christian if you found out that your salvation simply meant that you would spend eternity with Jesus, wherever he is? Because I think some people think Christianity is about having their insurance policy paid up so they can go to heaven. And it's interesting that in all of the record of the apostles preaching, there's, there's nothing about give your life to Jesus so that you can go to heaven. They didn't preach it. They didn't teach it. Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 30. For the sons of Judah have done this evil in my sight, declares the Lord. They have set their detestable things in the house that is called by my name to defile it. Wow. Verse 31. And they have built the high places of Tophet, which is in the valley of the son of Hinnom, to burn their sons and their daughters in the fire, which I did not command, nor did it come into my mind. Wow. We're now being introduced to this concept of this place called Tophet. It probably looks like Tophet, but it's in Hebrew, TH is usually pronounced T Tophet. Tophet. I've got a picture here of kind of a modern picture of the Valley of Hinnom. We're introduced to this place in uh, Judges, uh, I think 15. When they conquered the city of Jerusalem, on the south side, there was kind of a, a natural runoff thing. And eventually, it became the place where when they built the walls, and you can see some of the, the ruins of the walls up there, 
when they built the walls, the people would take their rubbish and just throw it over and it would just roll down. And This thing became the valley of rubbish. And then eventually somebody got the idea, probably because of the stench, well, we can't leave it there. So in a particular part of the valley of Hinnom, they set up this part of it called Tophet, which means burning furnace. That's, that's what it is. So they set up this huge furnace and they would throw the rubbish in and burn the rubbish and that's Tophet. That's where it is. So the valley of Hinnom was a rubbish dump and a part of that valley, Tophet, was this burning furnace. So, so kind of that's a bit of the background here to what we're talking about. Come with me now to verse 32. Therefore, behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when it will no more be called Tophet, or the valley of the son of Hinnom, but the valley of slaughter. For they will bury in Tophet because there is no room elsewhere. Wow. Jeremiah is saying that some judgment is, come, is about to come against the nation of Israel, the Judah as it was then. And there would be so many dead bodies that this just wouldn't be a rubbish dump, that the bodies would be thrown into this valley and that the bodies themselves would have to be burned and that this place would be a place where people would be slaughtered and burned. Indeed, that did happen when the Babylonians conquered the city and especially around the year 586 BC. It was a massacre. By the way, the same thing, similar thing happened when the Romans conquered Jerusalem around 70 AD. This valley of Hinnom, in Greek, valley or land is the word G. It's where we get geology, geography, G, G, E. And Hinnom in Greek is Henna. That's where we get this word Gehenna, Gehenna. Jesus used the word Gehenna 12 times. And in most English Bibles, it's translated as hell. <clears throat> Josiah, we read in 2 Kings 23, destroyed Tophet. Why? Because it says in 2 Kings 23, um, I think it's about verse 10 or so, around, it's in 2 Kings 23, that the people were using Tophet, the furnace at Tophet, taking their babies down to Tophet, their newborn babies, and throwing them into the furnace alive. I want you to see that Jeremiah, in listing the sins in order of depravity, finishes with this. Because even though Josiah had destroyed Tophet, the people in their sin had rebuilt it. And they were throwing their children into the fire, something forbidden in Leviticus 18, verse 21. Let's pray. Father, Help us to be a people who ascribe to you your due worship, your due glory. Help us to give you glory. Father, as we read of these people in the day of Jeremiah who utterly had hearts darkened, who utterly had minds depraved, who utterly rebelled against you, and this is where it led. Oh God, oh God, I pray for my heart not to be formally religious, but to be wholeheartedly devoted to Christ. I want Jesus to be the treasure of my life. Now, if you're listening to me today, you might be in your kitchen, your lounge room, your bedroom. You might be in your car. You might be on a plane, wherever you are listening to me right now. I invite you to make 
Jesus, the Lord of your life. Take, take the I out of sin and put the O and worship the Son instead of sin. The O of wonder. O of glory. O Jesus. Put O in the middle of sin and take the I out and make him the Lord of your life. Will you do that? Will you surrender to Jesus? You're one prayer away from being reconciled to God. A prayer that says, oh God, forgive me of my sin. Forgive me. Help me to enjoy fellowship with you. Help me to enjoy salvation. Help me to enjoy all that you have for me and help me to live for you. Fill me with your spirit, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. 